from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice one animal for each household. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat, with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of the meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, legs, and internal organs must be roasted over a fire. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency. For this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your posts will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is a day to remember each year from generation to generation you must celebrate it as a special festival of, to the Lord. This is the law for all time. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How many of you saw the movie The Ten Commandments? So you know what the Passover is. So I don't have to explain everything what it says but I tried my best to explain what this is about uh, today in the narrative of the Exodus Moses confronted Pharaoh with God's mandate you remember the famous phrase what Moses said let my people go to impress upon Pharaoh the seriousness of this message from the Lord, Moses, by the power of God, called down plagues and judgments on the Egyptian nation. At the same time, the people of Israel were learning about God's power and His mercy to them from these digesters. The time came for the tenth, the last final plague, the one that would give the Egyptians no choice than to 
drive the Israelites out. God sent an angel of death throughout Egypt to destroy all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. The term Passover is derived from the Hebrew word Pesach, which is based on the root Passover and refers to the fact that God passes over and the houses of the Israelites because of the blood of the Lamb. You know, Bach, before God delivered the Israelites, He gave them very clear instructions. Each household was to take a year old lamb, male lamb, without blemish and kill it. And some of the blood of the slain lamb was to be smeared or sprinkled on the two sides and on the top of the door frames of their homes. The blood would be assigned to the God that the Israelites lived in that house. And thus the firstborn of that house would not be struck dead when the angel of death struck down the firstborn and of all the houses of the Egyptians. The blood served as a protective identifying mark of belonging to Israel. You know, to be quite honest, this really puzzled me. Why did God need blood on the door frames of the Israelites' house in order to know where the Israelites lived? God has been mar- you know, making a distinction between the Israelites and Egyptians without any such help. For example, the Israelites did not suffer from the plagues like flies, livestock disease, or hail, or darkness. If God could make distinction between the Israelites and the Egyptians without the sign of the blood, why the need for blood on door frames to identify the Israelites during this last judgment? God asked them not to do anything when he brought these plagues to the Egyptians. Flies, livestock disease, or hail, or darkness. But God asked them to participate in this last plague during this last judgment. Why is that? First of all, God commanded the sign of the blood not because he could not distinguish the Israelites from the Egyptians, but because he wanted to teach his people that the Israelites were not saved because they were good people or better people, but simply because they trusted in the blood of the Lamb. Secondly, the God commanded the sign of the blood because the slaughter of the Lamb and the covering of the door frame with his blood was a mark of faith that apparently not limited to the Israelites, but anyone who placed their faith in God. You know, the text says that many others left Egypt with the Israelites. Both the Israelites and Egyptians might wonder, can this blood of the Lamb really protect us from the angel of death? Can God set us free tonight? Even though God's instructions were utterly crazy to both the Israelites and Egyptians alike, for those who believed and obeyed God's instructions, the night of judgment was to be a night of salvation. Imagine one Egyptian, Egyptian father asking one Israelite father nervously, saying, is it true that the the angel of death is passing through tonight and kill all the firstborn son in Egypt? The Israelite father answered, yes, But we were told to put the blood of the lamb on the door frames of our home and everything would be all right. You know, perhaps some Egyptians had claimed this God by joining an Israelite family or by marking their homes with the blood of the lamb. The application of the blood on the doorpost was a confession of their faith 
It was a public announcement that they believed in God and belonged to the Lord. That's why God asked them to put this blood on their doorposts. Not because he's blind by this blood, but because God wants them to participate in this great event in their lives. So how do we apply this message to our lives today? What is the significance of blood of the Lamb today? Why is it so important? Yes, we understand that God saved His people or God delivered them out of Egypt through this event. So what? I mean, we live in 21st century. We don't offer this offering anymore. Why this is important? Exodus 12 is filled with the foreshadowing of the ultimate redemption story. The lamb which was slain on the night of Passover represents Jesus Christ. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Look, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It is important because Jesus is the perfect lamb who had to die to save us from sin. There is safety and security in his shed blood. Just as the Israelites by faith physically apply the lamb's blood over the door frames of their homes. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, his blood is spiritually applied to our hearts and our lives. And as a result of his blood, we are saved from death and bondage of sin. Some people believe that they are saved because they help the poor and the oppressed. Some people believe that they are saved because they are active members of the local church. Some people believe that they are saved Because they never miss a Sunday school or Sunday worship. I'm talking about myself here. (laughs) I used to believe that way. But none of those will save us. What saved the Israelites from the day of judgment was the blood of the Lamb. was nothing else. God didn't care how much you put the blood on the door frames. God didn't care how much you save people's lives. What you did for God or for others. He didn't care about that. Only thing he cared about was seeing the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. What saved the Israelites from the day of judgment was nothing but the blood of the Lamb. And Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 2 and 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is gift from God, not by works so that no one can boast. Paul says salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Then how will we be saved? How will we be saved? Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and this is what the Israelites did on the night of Passover when they put the blood on the door frames. This is what they did. Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and saved. Brothers and sisters, The Israelites were not saved because they were good people or better people, but simply because they trusted in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is our Passover Lamb. 
On the night of his death, the disciples would have immediately realized that although all the provisions for the Passover meal was prepared, something vital was missing from the meal. Can you guess what it is? There was no lamb. Why? Because Jesus became the Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 says, Christ, our Passover lamb, had been sacrificed. There was a man who worked in a small town in an operator of a drawbridge on a river. A train ran across the bridge, and the operator's job was to keep the bridge up when no train was coming so that the boats could pass through underneath. When a train approached, he was to blow the whistle and let down the bridge. One, sun, one sunny Saturday morning, the man brought his seven-year-old son along to work with him. The body could frolic along the river, sip rocks on the water, butterflies, even try to catch a fish. Shortly before noon, a passenger train was due to come through the area. The man began to make preparation to let the bridge down so the train could pass safely across the river. As he examined the bridge, he noticed that someone a small child has somehow climbed over the guardrail next to the bridge and was playing at the very spot where the bridge would come down. As he looked closer, he realized with horror that the child was his son. In desperation, he yelled out his son's name, but the sound of the approaching train drowned out, the, down, drowned out his screams. He knew he had to make a quick decision. If he lowered the bridge now, his son would die. But if he didn't, all the people on the train would die as the train plunged into the river. He barely had time to think. As he screamed in agony, the man thrust forward the lever to the lower the bridge just as the train arrived. His son died instantly. And as the train passed by, the people just smiled and waved as they passed by the train in the control booth with his head bowed low oblivious to what had just taken place. Is this what God did for us on the night which he himself betrayed by his disciples? Is this what God did for us on the night of the Passover? Once a month we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Thank God that we don't have to kill a blemished lamb in our Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, we thank God for Jesus who gave his life for us on the cross. We thank God that Jesus is our Passover lamb. We also thank God that because of Jesus' blood personally applied to our hearts, we are safe. From death, and from death and destruction. When we trust in Jesus, it means the difference between life and death. Brothers and sisters, as we sing our last song, because He lives, we are about to sing. Let's take a moment to reflect on God's love. God was willing to pay the highest price for us. It was God's love for us that He sent Jesus to the cross. When we know that it is the blood alone that saves, we will have an uns unshakable peace. God gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may face tomorrow without fear 
and live through him. I invite you to stand. And as we sing, because he lives, let us reflect on his love to all of us. And let us depend on the blood of Jesus Christ in our lives. Nothing but the blood can save us. Because of his blood, we can face tomorrow without fear. And we can live through him. Let us sing because he lives together.